indie ball player in here this weekend. Actually, he was here for about four days. Believe it or not, I saw a video of him running electronically timed 5.9860. All he has to do is touch the ball and he's got a chance. As he was in here and we turned the volume up on the machine, turned the velocity up, he, was, he wasn't swinging and missing, but he wasn't barreling many, as many as he wanted to until I started telling him, I want you to hit the top of the ball. Don't change anything, still snap, snap and tilt, 3D load, all that stuff that you do, still do it, <clears throat> but I want you to feel like your barrel's gonna come right down on top of the ball. Basically, hit down on the ball and all of a sudden he started getting consistent barrels. So, what does that mean? Well, I've said over and over, the word down is not the problem, okay? When you're, when you're in your stance and your bat starts up there and you hit a ball down here, right down in the middle or lower, actually at the, high, at the top of the strike zone or lower, the barrel did come down. It started above your head and it ends up at your shoulders or lower, or your letters or lower. So the barrel comes down. The issue is how did it come down? If it came down from one leg like this, which we teach, that's beautiful. If it came down from two legs like this that they teach, that's not good, okay? But back to the point. We need our barrel speed to be down the back, not up the front. There's a fine line based on how your leg turns, when your leg turns, whether your speed is down the back or up the front. So when he was inconsistent, his speed was up the front and he would flare balls off or he would hook balls. Basically, he was trying to hit the ball on the upswing. Okay, and then I said hit the top of the ball, which means he had to generate the force down the back stroke rather than up the front stroke. And when he generated the force down the backstroke to hit the top of the ball, guess what? He actually hit the ball right here. When he was doing his other thing, he was trying to hit the ball right here and was hitting it out there and would flare when he hit the barrel. So, doing it properly, there's nothing wrong with saying swing down or hit the top of the ball. That doesn't mean you will hit the top of the ball. That means you'll have speed down the back and the barrel will turn up just as it comes up through the ball. Okay? I've been having my son just watch pitching machine batting pitches and making the motion of the swing like you say to do in front of the mirror. It seems to have helped him see the ball coming in and still just going through the correct motion without worrying actually hitting the ball. Not sure, I think it's great. That's what I just explained. Um, you know, the game of baseball, we're supposed to hit the ball. So, as you start throwing a ball at a guy, he tries to hit the ball. Hitting the ball is the goal. So he does what he can to hit the ball. And that makes sense to him. But when you're trying to make a swing change, it makes no sense. You gotta make the swing change whether it hits the ball or not. And once you make your swing change, now you'll feel where the barrel is and how it comes through, and now you'll be able to get in front of the ball. All right? I like exactly what you did. I'm asking my players all the time to get in front of a mirror while they're home. My young kids, I say, before you go to bed every night, 25 of these in front of a mirror. And it might be, it might be this, or, it might be this, 3D load, and how long can you keep your foot up? Because the young kids, when I ask for 3D load, they'll 3D load and just put their foot down. That's, you didn't stretch. The stretch comes from holding that foot up, okay? You can do all those things and others in front of a mirror, without a ball, without a bat, without a net, without a pitcher, without a tee, and make tremendous progress. So that the next time you're at the cage or the next game you're at, you'll you'll feel the benefit of what you did. I guess you got to be somewhat uh, crazy. <laughs> you know.
you know, I live and die in this, and, and I don't mind it. It's what I like. I'm glad I found something I like. Um, commitment to be the best you can be is pretty big. All right? When snapping the barrel, does that cause the elbow to slide? It sure does. Absolutely. When I've got my hand here and I turn my hand over, what's my elbow do? I can do it without my elbow moving, but as soon as I do it while I'm looking at a ball, that elbow's gonna get in there, okay? Now, when you watch video of hitters, sometimes you'll see something like this, which looks like the elbow is starting to slot. Is that a sliding elbow? Or is that my back stretching? and my tilt happening, and then I snap my hands. Think about the roundabout that we've talked about before, your timing mechanism. You're here and gonna launch there for the fastball or there for the slider or there for the changeup. You're doing the same thing. You're doing this move here every time. Well, look how far my elbow is there and I haven't swung the bat yet. It is not slotted. The slotting of the elbow is actually moving the elbow, okay? When you do it right, the body or the snap, the body stretching or the snap of the hands moves the elbow. Another thing that uh, I'll share with you that I've used in the last two or three lessons that has been effective to get people to keep their hands up, as I say, all the hands are allowed to do is make this little half moon right here below your chin, okay? And when they do that, they were doing this, something like that, and when they keep the half moon right there, all of a sudden, they'll keep their hands up.